Welcome back. You're watching chapter 4 of our Diving and Health series in which we address the issues of decompression sickness. And we're going to be talking about the on-the-scene first aid steps, subsequent evaluation, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, and some of the issues of emergency in-water recompression and other emergency resources. To start off with, let's look at treating decompression sickness. If signs or symptoms are consistent with decompression sickness and they develop, they should prompt appropriate first aid. And that includes contacting the nearest emergency medical services. They would provide additional assistance. And the local DAN is of course one of the primary numbers that one should contact. But sometimes there may be local emergency medical services that are able to respond more promptly. And each dive site and dive situation should be tailored in such a way that the emergency medical plan is optimal. Now there are several elements to the effective management of decompression sickness specifically on the scene evaluation and first aid. Then transport and definitive medical evaluation followed by treatment. Anyone who has suffered decompression sickness should seek appropriate evaluation, possibly ongoing care from a physician well informed on diving related medical issues. Now let's look at the first aid on the scene management. The foundation of first aid is basic life support and the first aid measure for decompression sickness is the delivery of supplemental oxygen in the highest concentration or fraction that is practical. High concentrations of oxygen, if provided rapidly over a sustained period of time, can reduce and in some cases even eliminate symptoms of decompression sickness, albeit often only temporarily if definitive treatment is not also secured. Continuous flow oxygen systems using non-rebreather or pocket masks are frequently available in diving environments, but such equipment delivers modest oxygen fractions and is rather wasteful of oxygen. Much higher fractions of oxygen may be achieved by demand masks, but they are also only appropriate for conscious individuals who are able to breathe on their own. Rebreather systems, in other words, diving systems, are another option. They can be used with a setting on 100% oxygen and the oxygen can then be recycled and rebreathed. So a rebreather can become a first aid device and may be useful in a particular setting. There are chemical generating systems that have a long half-life but the amount of oxygen that they produce is fairly minimal and these devices are unlikely to provide sufficient oxygen supplies. DAN experts developed a remote emergency oxygen surface system with a rebreather built in and this is another consideration especially if oxygen supplies are limited. Next, the subsequent evaluation. Now first aid is just the first step in treating an affected diver. Anyone who has experienced symptoms associated with decompression sickness is advised to seek subsequent medical evaluation. This should occur even if the diver's symptoms improved or disappeared upon the administration of oxygen since subtle issues can be missed or symptoms can return once oxygen delivery is stopped. For the same reason, it is advisable to seek input from an experienced 
diving medical specialist, someone aware of all the nuances in the presentation and course of treatment of decompression sickness. Next, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This is the definitive treatment for decompression sickness and it is the delivery of 100% oxygen under pressure. Hyperbaric oxygen or HBO reduces the size of bubbles and improves the gradients which promotes the exchange of the inert gas for oxygen and of course improves oxygen delivery to tissues that have been starved of oxygen as a result of the disruption caused by bubbles. HBO therapy is typically provided in recompression chambers. Monoplace chambers may be appropriate in certain conditions and they are certainly most common throughout the world but you need an experienced team and they should be used to managing these cases. We do not recommend that in the hands of individuals who are unfamiliar with the use of these devices or this equipment. Multiplace or multi-lock hyperbaric chambers are the more typical devices but they are not necessarily available everywhere. The advantage of these is that personnel or equipment can be transferred in or out of the chamber as the treatment is ongoing. A common treatment regimen for uh, decompression illness is US Navy Treatment Table 6 or Royal Navy Table 62. This regimen starts at 2.8 atmospheres which is the equivalent of 18 meter seawater and the individual breathes oxygen for periods of 20 minutes with 5 minutes interruptions. In other words they take off the mask and breathe the chamber air. This is just about for an hour and if symptoms have cleared then the next stage of the treatment table can be commenced. This involves a slide of 30 minutes from 18 to 9 meters after which one continues monitoring the situation for ongoing recovery and of course the continuation of symptoms being resolved. Monoplace chambers may be appropriate but again only in the hands of people who are familiar in using these facilities. The course of hyperbaric oxygen therapy will vary according to the particulars of a case. Both the presentation of decompression sickness and the response to the treatment. These may be idiosyncratic. A full resolution of decompression sickness symptoms can sometimes be achieved with one but sometimes require multiple hyperbaric treatments. Sometimes even then the resolution may be incomplete because remember just like with any injury you can't expect the full recovery of the damage to occur literally while you wait. Sometimes it takes time. The important thing is to know that the amount of hyperbaric treatment that has been given has established an optimal point from which the person will continue making an ongoing recovery and therefore modest residual symptoms which will resolve on their own will sometimes mean that further hyperbaric treatment is unnecessary. It may not be necessary to continue hyperbaric treatment until all symptoms have been alleviated. And yes, it may sometimes take months before all the symptoms have resolved. Now let's talk about in-water recompression. In-water recompression is a controversial subject and it may be appropriate in only very specific circumstances. First of all, we're talking about in-water oxygen recompression. And the way in which this may be used requires a number of things. It should be made available very quickly. The water should be of a temperature that does not pose an additional thermal risk on the individual. The affected individual should be able to breathe 
easily and they should wear a full face mask so as to overcome the possibility of them having an oxygen related reaction or seizure which if they were wearing a scuba regulator would mean that they lose their mouthpiece and may drown. So there are only certain situations where it may be appropriate. Under most situations it is better to get a person to breathe a hundred percent oxygen at the surface and then get them to a definitive hyperbaric oxygen therapy facility. Doing an abortive or erroneous in-water recompression may leave the patient in worse shape than if it had never been done. And the medical community and diving communities remain divided on this point. It's fair to say that in remote locations with experienced teams it may be appropriate but it is not something that should be undertaken willy-nilly as a last ditch situation. Last, let's consider some emergency resources. The best course of action if signs or symptoms consistent with decompression sickness or any other injury develop is to initiate appropriate first aid and then immediately contact the nearest emergency medical services which sometimes may be Dan or the local EMS. Then contact Dan to seek advice and if the person is a Dan member to also log the case so that further advice and in the case of Dan membership or coverage membership benefits may be made available. The organization's hotline may vary depending on the part of the world and this is something that is very important in the diving briefing. It is generally not appropriate to show up unannounced at the nearest hyperbaric chamber and this is for a variety of reasons. It may be that the facility where the person goes may not be staffed 24 hours. It may also be that the person is not suffering from decompression sickness and may need an entirely different treatment because not all injuries or all happenings that are abnormal in relation to diving are decompression sickness. So the closest emergency medical facility where an acceptable evaluation may be done by clinically trained individuals is the first step and a key point in managing a case of decompression illness or another diving related event. And when in doubt of course call Dan. The emergency hotline is there for a reason. The operator will then confirm your name, location and phone number and often connect you directly or include a Dan medical officer in the call so that you immediately have the opportunity to talk to someone trained in diving medicine and they will call you back at the earliest possible moment. The medical staff member may make an immediate recommendation after calling you back to refer you to a local physician for evaluation. The medical staff member may also ask you to wait by the phone while these arrangements are made and these plans may take minutes, sometimes 30, sometimes longer depending on where the injury occurs. There are various parts of the world where communication can be very complicated. If the situation is life-threatening, arrange for transport to the nearest medical facility immediately stabilizing the person as best you can and then call Dan. Consulting an emergency medical physician or professional is the best you can do in that situation. We realize that it is not always ideal and there are many factors to consider. Even if symptoms were not severe and they resolved completely, a diver who has had previous bouts of decompression sickness may also 
require special considerations, especially if decompression sickness is recurring following otherwise safe dive profiles. And in that case, a diving medical specialist should be consulted not only with the event, but also to determine whether diving should be continued and can be continued safely. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. Uh, give us your comments, your feedback, ask your questions, and even give us anecdotes or vignettes of situations you've been in or witnessed, because this adds to the collection of experience amongst divers caring for divers.